Hi guys, today we're gonna talk about hype, why the theory you know is commonly wrong just because of this theory is made by the manufacturers just to convince you to buy their products. Why repeating after the famous audio engineers actually can be useless crazy video about monitors, acoustic correction tools, compressors, EQs. By the way, there is one of the best audio production courses online, 9 months course. I use the most fair approach. You get one free trial class, which is a real class with my current students, so you can see exactly how we study to decide. Even after this class, I don't take any payments. You start the course, you make sure it works for you, and only then you make monthly payments. I need to convince you class by class that this is the top quality education to keep you enrolled in. 99% of students graduate from this course and I've been doing it like this for 8 years in a row. Right now on the screen you can see reviews, I ask my students to put their reviews under my YouTube videos. These guys are taking my course right now. So if you're gonna be attending your free trial class, exactly with these guys you're gonna be in a group. You can even ask them in person. They will finish the course in the mid-September. This course even have unique homework check-in classes. I will open up your projects in real-time, changing settings, showing your mistakes. Find the link in the first pinned comment or in the description to more than 200 reviews of my students and information about my professional career. But the best way is get a free trial class. How to contact me information is on the screen or in the first pinned comment or in the description. <laughs> Ugly Truth 1. Ask yourself. Everything you know about audio, where did you get this information? Audio production market is all about sales. Everybody tries to sell something. Those manufacturers of some products, they taught you how to think about things. And obviously they created their own theory to convince you to buy their products. It will blow your mind. Just ask yourself, really. If they try to sell some plugin, definitely they will start to exaggerate how important it is. It will be the only way how you can get it. They specifically will forget about some disadvantages of their technologies. They will try to convince you it's a perfect solution. Things you know about audio production. It can be just things what manufacturers of different products convince you to believe in. And it becomes your audio engineering knowledge, which doesn't necessarily mean it brings some results. Sometimes yes, but sometimes totally not. So instead of learning real audio engineering, you learn marketing bullshit. Let's say acoustic correction tools. Nowadays they try to convince you that proper acoustic setup, it can be not that important if you can fix it and like their software can easily fix it, right? First of all, they lie to you like it's all about just frequency balance. How about, for example, how long different frequency lasting? It's called damping. You say, uh, and your room is like, uh, it's lasting, you know what I mean? If you have proper studio setup, you have this reverb time under control. Ask yourself how this plugin correction tool can shorten reflections in your room. This software will say, hey room, shut up right now. Be very short, shut up. <laughs> this software just can emphasize volume of some frequencies and can decrease some volume of some frequencies. Another problem they will not tell you. I'm gonna draw it on the screen. So let's say this is your side wall. This point is where you're sitting. Waveform which goes to the side wall. Then it goes back through the same trajectory, the same frequency with the same length. At the point where you're sitting, as you can see, this waveform goes up and this waveform goes down. It's called phase constellation. In the frequency spectrum, it will be like a drop. So this plugin software will try to push volume of this frequency. So what happens here? This amplitude becomes just taller. So let's say tall amplitude goes to this wall and uh, basically reflection which goes through the same trajectory at the point where you're sitting. As you can see, it still will be total cancellation. You're not gonna improve anything. It was no volume, it's still no volume. Your plugin tries to make it louder, but no result because of physics. It cannot say to the waveform something like, hey, don't cancel yourself, please. Software cannot do it like this, you know what I mean? Also, the main concept of this software or some very fancy monitors, they try to convince you like flat curve, it just guarantees good mixes. This concept definitely has pretty good logic in it. But let's be honest, uh, for DKs, we use NS10 style monitors like these ones. And these monitors, they totally crazy. But of course, manufacturer will tell you, no, our monitors have the flattest curve in the world. And for this, 
pl pay ten thousand dollars you can say something like but you push your course on us i'm an audio production teacher i also push on you my course and trying to convince you to attend my course let's be honest right but the thing is i never force you to do it only in this way or in this way to buy something i never do anything like that my strategy is to teach you real audio engineering critical thinking all classic different approaches and alternative approaches you know i even show you some of my own invented techniques and i never tell you what's better i show you options and i teach you how to choose from those options and it will be your choice so this is the difference <music> ugly truth two they also force on you this kind of magic plugins like something like oh my god this legendary tool they push on you some compressor but this compressor easily can boost all noises from the tails of your notes plus can oversaturate your signal they give you this like smart equalizers yeah it will analyze every overtone of your spectrum and put hundreds of equalizers like cutting this particular frequency a bit more this frequency a bit less this frequency so it it creates like 100 cuts and then you absolutely impress why your instrument sounds lifeless this is how you should EQ basses. You should just boost this particular frequency with this amazing colorful equalizer. But why nobody says how this movement, let's say, killed all other instruments in the mix? You made bass more emphasized, other instruments masked by your bass. Instead of like saying what equalizer is better for the bass, you should just ask yourself how this movement affects this bass. What pros and cons of this movement? How about mirror frequency effect? I have a video on my channel about mirror frequency effect. I actually recommend five videos of my channel. I will put it in the first pin comment. Instead of like, oh, it's a magic equalizer for the bass. Next thing, legendariness. I call it legendariness. I'm not even sure if there is a word like this. Don't use critical thinking. Just apply this tool because of, let's say, countless recordings were made with this tool. This famous audio engineer always use it on a vocal. Maybe in your mix this tool just sucks. You should make your own decisions what's really wrong in your particular mix and how to fix it and what potential tool will be the most suitable for the job. It's the same you like basketball coach, right? You have, let's say, 70 years old NBA superstar who was playing in 1812 when Napoleon was running out of Russia. Super fancy, legendary basketball player, let's say point guard, but you need some forward just to make rebounds or whatever and you have 18 years old, 3 meters tall, all super effective forward who you're gonna choose for the task for rebounds this 70 years old point guard or you're gonna choose this 18 years old who is nine feet tall choose the right tool don't choose what's the most legendary you know it's not like really oh you smart ass you say these things no it's like you just have muddy mix you have dirty mix unclear mix just because of you apply some legendary tool I show every tool, including legendary tools, but showing what they really do, what their strong size, what their weak size. I save my students thousands of dollars because they don't go and don't buy like crazy expensive legendary tools. Even if they go and buy some legendary tool, at least they will know in advance what to expect. I specifically teach them not to be like, oh my god, it's a Neumann U87. It's just a tool, you know, it's a screwdriver in the hand of electrician whatever u87 whatever nice microphone for some tasks impressive but for some tasks totally sucks it all depends you just need to know what to expect you should feel yourself confident you have the huge arsenal of knowledge techniques skills understanding experience and all this stuff this is what we develop right and then in any situation you will find the tool which just works the best simple example recently i was recording a vocal right i have u47 it was muddy Super legendary microphone, but it was muddy, it didn't work at all. I used two U87s and actually one of them much tighter and second one like totally fat, like super warm and dark, which didn't work at all. Somebody else will say, oh, it's U87, I should use it. I, and I say, no, I should not use it. It sounds muffled, it takes reverb effect much worse because it's much darker. I would need to EQ it like crazy. And even if I EQ it like crazy, I only would boost noises, sibilances and... Uh, uh, I will lose density because of I over EQ it and all this stuff. Let's say I also could use U47 FET transistor version. It has like enormous clarity in the sound of this microphone. But it simply didn't have enough density for my tasks. But let's say if I want more proximity effect, I can I can come closer to this microphone and lows will not be totally muffled because this microphone has unique clarity. 
So one microphone better for one distance, other microphone better for the other distance. And if you understand all these principles, you get the best results. Just a couple of examples where legendary tools simply absolutely suck. 2254 Neve compressor commonly suck on vocals because it cannot even out notes properly. Fairchild compressor, one of the most legendary compressors of all time, can be just simply too dirty. It has so pronounced saturation. If your recording is already very saturated and colorful, you apply some amount of compression and you exaggerate harmonics by it. The most legendary preamplifier of all time, Nif 1073. But what if you need really pristine clarity of your recording? Nif 1073 doesn't sound that clear. And when it comes to legendary tools, they try to convince you that their plugins like 100% copies of real tools. And they mislead you. Right now on the screen you have official SSL channel strip. I was official tester for the first generation of these plugins many years ago. I'm a big fan of SSL and all this stuff. Over here I have exactly the same channel strip in analog. I don't have dirty electricity, I have pure sine wave in my studio. And that's why I know that this analog 9000 channel strip actually produces some amount of harmonics anyway. This channel strip doesn't have any emulation of any harmonic, it's a pure digital plugin. So how it can be 100% copy of this tool? Now on the screen you can see other two SSL channel strips but based on 4000 series specification. Both of these channel strips add some harmonics. They have totally different principles, not exactly like analog devices anyway. For example, Universal Audio changes the structure of coloration by two knobs, input volume and output fader, equalizer itself fully digital and, comp and dynamics as well. While Brainworks blends harmonics based on what module is engaged. If you have dynamics engaged, you're gonna have specific structure of harmonics. If you have EQ engaged, you have the other structure of harmonics. Modules will define the structure of harmonics on universal audio, input and output volume. Fader, for example, on Brainworks plugin doesn't change coloration at all. Ask yourself how many people in the world know these little principles of these plugins. And how many people really believe it's a true representation of real analog equipment? Even though I absolutely admire these mixing tools, I know these tools, what they really are, you know. I don't try to pretend like it's a legendary tool and that's why I need to apply it. And most importantly, I don't believe it's 100% authentic emulation. Next ugly truth, the audio engineering world is toxic. We all deal with this all the time, crazy stuff going on. Everybody believes he's a god and everybody else just sucks. If you're a beginner, just be prepared. Leave yourself and give other people to leave. Just respect what other people do and respect what you do as well. Don't allow somebody to stop you. You don't have five Grammy, how dare you say something about blah, 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 blah. Never allow these haters to stop you. Just because of you will understand that this audio engineering world is so toxic. You just really will understand not to react to it and just like do what you do and that's it, you know. Don't go against somebody and don't allow somebody else to go against you. I had a defamation against me like somebody just attended my course, didn't pay on time, was thrown out of the course, lied a lot of things over there and then... Uh, like uh, when I try to reply, my students try to reply to this guy. They basically deleted all our comments and locked the page so nobody can reply. Neither me nor my students. So, so just be prepared. It's a so toxic world. But even it's a good thing, you know, because it didn't stop me and I actually I did even better. And after this defamation, I have even more success and all this stuff. Just make sure it will never stop you. The last ugly truth, but not least, it's an interesting proverb. The more you learn, the more you realize you haven't learned anything yet. Let's say you know how equalizer works and you believe, yeah, I just know how it works. But the thing is, every year you can reanalyze it, you can reconsider it, you realize it totally differently and every year you're like mind-blowing, like, oh my god, finally I know it. And next year, oh my god, seems like I didn't know it, and now finally I know it. And then another year, and again, like, oh my god, finally I know it. It can be crazy long process, just as a proof of my statement. Among students, I have many beginners, and I have, like, more experienced guys, and very experienced guys as well. And one of the most common phrases, what I hear from more experienced guys, something like, I've been working with audio for 10 years, but every class I learn something new which blows my mind. It means 
all these guys already knew those things, but you just analyze it differently. You just realize it differently. Something new you learn and it change your world totally. You know what I mean? They say, I work with audio for 20 years professionally. And during this course, I reanalyze things. I improve my understanding. I see things differently and all this stuff. You know, alternative vision to some things. It means no matter what kind of level you have, you anyway have some things which you don't know, or you don't know it properly, or you just have only one side of vision to this subject or something like that. So there are always something to learn. This is actually my key point of my course. I always show some subjects from all possible point of views, showing all potential issues with that. And then you basically always have some alternatives. And what's cool for beginners, always do just like this. Instead, they will save many, many years because they will see all potential options and they will go in the right direction instantly, understanding there is no just like one right direction. But they will be totally armed by all possible techniques, understandings and different points of view. This is what allows you to be a real audio engineer, not just like repeater. Repeater is a guy who just takes somebody's setting and apply the same settings in their own mixes. It's a repeater. It sometimes sounds maybe not too bad, but in some circumstances it never works at all. You know, instead you learn how to be a reload engineer. And you know, even when you learn something, it doesn't mean you really know how to do it. I sometimes find that when people, let's say, learn some topic and then they make homework on my course, I check their projects in real time and I compare their mixes to greatest sounding songs of all time. I notice a lot of people make like really serious mistakes and even though they kind of covered the topic, something they still don't get. And finally I have opportunity to show them where they really do it wrong, you know, which is super beneficial because sometimes you just believe you understand this, but you still don't understand this. And I double check if you really understood. And if you're interested in the course, start with a free trial class to see exactly how we study to decide. Information how to contact me is on the screen, in the first pinned comment or in the description.